Hey guys, Dr. Lola. Today we're going to talk about Fear the Walking Dead. Um, it premiered this past weekend and it read, it was pretty good, you know. Um, on Talking Dead they said that uh, it, the episode picked up a few hours after they arrived at Strand's house. So they didn't even spend the night there. And um, the opening scene, of course, we see Nick and Strand taking charge once again, um, getting the group over to Abigail. The show definitely let us know that L.A. is gone, you know, as they were uh, riding out on beautiful Abigail. They were looking back over the water and seeing Los Angeles with fires and bombs and things like that. So we definitely have the impression that L.A. is demolished. Abigail that they showed where they're filming now is not the same boat that they showed in the season finale. So if you look at that, the boat in the season finale was a lot larger. There were more levels to it. And um, so they actually are filming on a set. The boat is docked on a set. And uh, that tells us that they're gonna be on the boat probably all season, maybe getting off once or twice here or there uh, to make things a little bit more exciting. So um, to get back to Strand and um, Nick, they have been very good leaders. They're the closest thing that we have to leaders with this group. Of course, um, they haven't really evolved like characters on The Walking Dead. And Alicia, she is, um, you know, a teenager. She's been distraught. Her boyfriend's gone. She wasn't allowed to have any closure with him. And her father or her stepfather um, tells her to grab the radio and to do something for the family, trying to distract her from the boat of survivors that is approaching the Abigail. Um, so she does that. She takes the radio and nobody really checks into with her. Her mother kind of checks in with her a little bit saying you're not getting enough sleep, but nobody's really connecting with her. And so she gets on the radio and she just finds this guy, Jack. Now Jack is pretty smart and I do not trust Jack. Okay. What Jack does is he gets her talking to trust. He's acting all innocent and he, you can tell that his signal is getting clearer the longer the show goes on. Each time she talks to him, his radio signal is clear. And so he starts with this music to draw people in. And the music is actually a song that's singing about the apocalypse. He gets a hook on his fish line, which is Alicia, and he basically reels her in, getting more information about the Abigail, where they're going. And then all of a sudden there's this crisis and the boat's gonna sink and he tells her, you know, we're going to go on land. And she said, don't do that. There's too many zombies there. And so then he said, she says, well, maybe we can come get you. And he had her tell him basically the Abigail's location. And then he told her a location of where he was supposedly at. And this, by this time, the signal on the CB radios is clear as day. You know, he's close. Also, I want to point out that Mandy told Strand that she heard music that very likely could be the music that this guy Jack has been playing. And Strand, of course, dismissed it and said no. She tries to convince um, Strand and her dad to uh, pick Jack up. And Strand's basically like, no way, I have rules on this boat. When were you gonna tell me? What did you tell them about us? And he's like, rule number one, this is my boat. Rule number two, this is my boat. And rule number three, if there's any complication understanding rule number one or two, this is my damn boat. So anyway, he's setting the boundaries. And I think right now the survivors really don't get it. Um, there's two people that do get it, Strand and Nick. Uh, Zach is coming uh, when Alicia said, oh, we can't come pick you up. He said, don't worry, I got you. I'll see you soon. And so we, that kind of leads us to believe that he's on his way. He's on his way now. And the minute that happened, um, Strand's boat signal thing, or dee, 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 you know, indicating that somebody's coming. And so it's very likely that we're going to meet Jack. Next. I think that Strand relates to Nick because of something in Strand's background. He's a survivor, uh, but a different type of survivor. And he sees in Nick something that he probably seen in himself. Is he manipulative? Yes. 
Um, is he self-serving? Probably. But you kind of have to be to survive the apocalypse, right? I mean, going back to other shows, uh, you know, people that are surviving in a uh, AZ situation, well, you know, you, you have to look out for yourself. You have to make those tough calls. Okay, maybe because this is the beginning of the AZ, we're going to call them selfish. We're going to call them um, untrustworthy. We're, but it's these are characteristics of people that have gone through some very difficult times. And so he, he connects with Nick, and he cares about what is going on with Nick and encourages him. They're almost like the two leaders of this group. And uh, if you notice, whenever there's a difficult situation, uh, if Nick's not there, Travis and Maddie will step in. But if Nick's there, they defer to Nick. Nick is the one that had the motor on the boat doing the face. Nick is the one that's smashing the truck in the Zom. Nick is the one that is the confidant and is leading the group forward with Strand. So I think that... Um, those are going to be our two leaders. So, you know, Chris is angry. He's a acting out. Not uh, adjusted well to the divorce of his parents. He does didn't want to come over to his father's home. He didn't want. He doesn't want to connect. He told his father that Nick is not my brother. That is not my family. Pretty much, my mother is my family. So he's lost his family. He's lost his mother. He doesn't believe his father loves him or cares about him. He basically allows his father and Maddie to fight off Zoms while he's grieving over his mother's body on the beach. He doesn't pick up a finger. I mean, he's in a really bad place right now. And there's a lot of hating on him um, from fans. But I think that that might be premature. Yes, right now he's causing... Um, he's threatening the lives of his family members. He's being a jerk. You know, he tossed his mother's body in. But why did he do that? Because he's angry she left. Because he was standing there fine until his father started talking more intimately about his mother. Yes, the best thing about our relationship was we made our son, whom we love very much. He doesn't believe that his father loves him. He cares about his other family more. That's what's going on in Chris's head. Um, he heard that Travis loved him, and um, when he, when he was saying the eulogy for Aliza, uh, and then he heard um, that Maddie say, you know, I would do this just like Travis did uh, to anybody that I love, insinuating that she loved him as well. So he heard that word twice, and um, he's realizing now that. He doesn't have anybody else. This is what he's stuck with. He's going to have to adjust. So he puts his hoodie on. He walks out to a nice little family, you know, dinner uh, where they're all standing around. They're looking at the eel that Daniel caught and, you know, preparing things and spooning food. And um, you notice Strand's not there. Strand's not there. He's up. He knows what the deal is. He's up on, on top of that boat looking and driving and monitoring because he knows that shit is gonna go down and he's not gonna play family and so Chris sees the family situation and he walks out on the back of the boat and he jumps in now okay Nick responds you notice that Nick was the first to respond where's mama where's papa where's anybody else nowhere Nick he's the one that has the raw survivor skills he's lived this for a long time he's lived a very lived in a world that was unstable the way he viewed things was different than his family and you know he was an addict and dealing with a whole bunch of issues like he said facing death every time he used Daniel kind of um, talks to uh, Chris for a while and he kind of like takes the role of Travis saying, hey, you know, I'm sorry your mom died. And Chris says, hey, I'm sorry your wife died. I wish we could have said goodbye. But Daniel said that wouldn't have made a difference. Um, he is a realist. He recognizes that things are going to happen and possibly the world is already over. And he is kind of just making the best of things 
and trying to survive, i.e. fishing and, and trying to provide food um, while they figure out what's going to happen next. And he doesn't know. Um, so Travis sees that. He's probably wishing that he was the one that was able to talk to his son like a father and um, goes up to Daniel trying to get information like what was said and Daniel didn't really um, say anything to him. There was this interaction between Nick and Ophelia, but um, some people were saying that they thought it was romantic. I didn't see that. Nick is taking the role where he's having to pretty much look after people and he had to heal his own wounds. There were times where he had to take care of himself, um, being in the certain predicaments that he was in, living the drugging life. And so he knows how to dress wounds. And it looked like she did a crappy job. So he was being nice and offering um, and giving her some tips. Of course, she's standoffish. She also lost her mom. She was a very sheltered person and being thrown in this world. So we've got a lot of people who are not um, streetwise and they uh, lack a lot of survival skills. I mean, Maddie and Travis are on the beach with rocks. I mean, how many... I don't know, like whacking zombies or sticks or something. Uh, they don't, they're not even using like tools. And so, you know, these people aren't equipped. Their brain is not there. Maddie's wanting to save everybody. She's wanting people to come on the boat. At least Travis is a little further along. He's like, we can't do that. Family's number one priority. We have to take care of our family. So Travis sighs with Strand on that when the survivors come. Oh, they also said that the boat that was tipped over was the same boat that they saw the survivors come up on, on them initially and I don't believe that's true. The boat that was tipped over was way bigger than the boat that the floaty boat that was coming towards them. Um, so I don't think it was the same boat. Very possibly what it could be is that bigger boat was one that Jack and his people hijacked. Uh, but we will find that out because Nick did swim underneath. Anyway, so Nick grabs the yacht log and uh, brings that out. That's gonna have some significance. We're gonna find out what happened to that boat. We're gonna find out maybe more backstory of the way I thought that his interaction with that zombie showed that our zombies on fear are fresher. Uh, they probably smell better too, but they're uh, more, there's more humanity to them. When um, Travis was calling out Nick's name, the zombie stopped attacking and turned her head ever so slightly to orient to where the name was being called from. But it wasn't the same type of instinctual movement that we see on The Walking Dead. This show is going to be slower right now because we are not in the throes of the apocalypse. These are people that, you know, right now they're on a yacht sailing the ocean. They really haven't come across a lot of zombies. The ones that they did, they're floaters. Uh, they're not up close, you know, they're looking from afar. They're making dinner and and talking and they're not preparing weapons. They're not trying to figure out how to gather food. There's no organization to them. They are not organized and they're not prepared for what's coming ahead. So this is new. Um, we're going to see them develop. I predict that Nick and... Strand are going to be the leaders of the group. Strand probably is not this creepy, manipulative person. He is a guy that lived through some hard times and he knows how to survive. And surviving means making the tough decisions that he can do. And he saw in Nick something that he saw in himself. The group is headed to San Diego. Why? I don't know. A lot of people are predicting that it's some, for some kind of malicious thing. The Strand has some kind of um, trick up his sleeve to try to use, uh, use Travis and um, Daniel and all that for some self-serving purpose. The thing I find interesting is that Maddie's children don't like to listen to her. Um, anything Maddie says, you know, whether it's like, oh, you look tired, go to sleep. Or, um, they don't seem to respect her and so uh, this is truly um, rocky relationships within the family Maddie and Travis right now they seem to be having some hard times and they're not even really talking about it they're basically putting their head down and burying it hoping that it's just gonna go away well that's all I've got I really like this episode again you know if you're on the cusp for this give it a chance it's really um, 
interesting to see how the ZA has evolved. We're starting from the ground floor. We're going to be watching these people learn how to survive. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the character development comes about and which ones are the leaders. You know, one thing that's interesting is like this is a cohesive group, it, it seems. Even though they're very different and they may be broken in some ways, it's cohesive. The show, Walking Dead, has a lot of extra characters that they can kill off. But this, so far, this um, show doesn't. There's not that many extraneous characters that they can kill off. So it'll be interesting to see how they keep the suspense going and who they're going to kill off first. Some of the videos I plan on bringing are uh, more Fear the Walking Dead. And there's some things I want to do with The Walking Dead, such as a comparative between Comic Book Carol and TV Show Carol. But I also want to bring in Z Nation. If you haven't watched Z Nation, it's a very uh, good show, and Sci-Fi puts it on. It's been running now two seasons. This year will be its third season. It airs in September 2016. And the Z, uh, Z Nation takes place three years after the apocalypse. Um, it's a very good show. I'm doing video series on that. Well, thank you for watching, and if you like the video, hit the like button. I don't know where it's at. It's somewhere there. Um, and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, and it really makes my day. And um, I'll see you later. Bye.